Welcome to this topic, PEC Article 1.0, Understanding Philippine Electrical Code Series 2, Part 2. I'm Bernabe Salazar, your resource speaker. Let us proceed to Part 2 of Series 2. In the first part of Series 2, we completed one section, and that is Section 1.01.1, Purpose of the Code, Paragraph A, B, C, D. I hope you learned more from Part 1 of the Series 2. If not, please watch the video again. Now, we will decode PEC Section 1.01.2, Scope of the Code, the thing it covered and not covered, and NEC Section 90.2, Paragraph C, Special Permission, which doesn't exist in the scope of Philippine Electrical Code Section 1.01.2. PEC Section 1.01.2 tells us that these codes cover the installation and removal of electrical conductors, equipment, and raceway, monitoring signaling and communication conductors' equipment and raceway, and optical fiber cables and raceway installed within. Similar to what NEC 2017 covered, it covers the installation and removal of electrical conductors equipment and raceway, monitoring, signaling, and communication conductors equipment and raceway, and optical fiber cables and raceway installed within or on, to or from. Here's the photo showing the initial cover rates for electrical conductor installation and removal. To continue, the code covers the installation, removal, and monitoring of signaling and communication conductors, equipment, and raceway. And also, it covers the installation and removal of the optical fiber communication cable. So, it is very hard to accept by now that only few electrical practitioners are doing this uh, work in optical fiber communication. Mostly, uh, we let ECE do it for us. Let's reclaim those rights because it is covered by our very own electrical code. Another coverage part of PEC states that it covers public and private buildings but not limited to residential, commercial, industrial, institutional, cultural, agricultural, agro-industrial, planned unit development, and other buildings, premises that may require practical safeguarding of person and property from the hazard arising from the use of electricity. Given our visual figures of public buildings like hospitals, police stations, public libraries, fire department, schools and universities, public libraries, bank, church, etc. where you can do electrical design, electrical installation, repair, operations, maintenance, inspection, sign and seal, supply of electrical equipment and materials, and other electrical engineering scopes. Also included are residential, condominiums, office buildings, high-rise building, industrial and manufacturing, and agricultural engineering establishment. We cover the scope of the full range of electrical services we can offer as an electrical practitioner. As I look at it, there are so many job opportunities and small businesses needed to make sure the electrical engineering field can be supported. What do you think? If you have a realization how big our industry of electrical, you will be proud of our profession, right? Please comment if you have a positive thought for me. Moving on. Uh, for NEC Section 90.2A covered, it says that it covered public and private premises including buildings, structures, mobile homes, and recreational vehicles and floating buildings. Wow, very short. Here are some visual representation of the NEC Section 90.2 Paragraph A mentioned it covers mobile homes, floating buildings, and recreational vehicles and building structures related to the scope of electrical work is stated in the code like electrical design, electrical installation, repair, removal, operation, maintenance, supply of electrical materials, and equipment. Another coverage of PEC Section 1.01.2 Paragraph A are electrical generating plant, industrial plant, 
where the full scope of work of electrical engineering practice can be rendered. Next area covered by PEC Section 1.01.2 Paragraph A are transformer stations and permanent or temporary substation, where supply, installation, testing, operations, maintenance, monitoring can be executed by the electrical profession. Philippine Electrical Code also covered airfields and railway switchyard. There's a lot of things PEC covered, hindi ka mawawala ng focus, right? The electrical services that were covered by PEC extend from the use of electricity to yards, parking lots, and carnivals. We can do electrical design, electrical installation, repair, removal, operations, maintenance, or supplies of electrical materials and equipment. Another place where PEC covered the electrical use is for quarries and mines and watercraft, where Chapter 9 of PEC was solely assigned for watercraft to cover the use of electricity or for supply, installation, testing, operations, repair, maintenance, removal, replacement, or even electrical design. Another covered by PEC Section 1.01.2 Sublevel A or Paragraph A Number 11 is the dockyards, where we cover all electrical services for the safe use of electricity in the dockyards. Oops, there are more. PEC covers trailers, mobile homes, and recreational vehicles too, where we can render electrical services like electrical design, electrical installation, repair, removal, operation and maintenance, and supply of electrical materials and equipment. Similar to the last one, we can extend our services to offshore facilities. Incredible, right? So while NEC Section 90.2A Number 2 and 3 mention the coverage are yards, lots, parking, carnivals, and industrial substation where electrical services is covered by the code, and industrial plant and installation of conductors and equipment that connects to the supply of electricity. NEC Section 90.2 Paragraph A Number 4 Coverage state the installation used by the electric utility such as office buildings, warehouses, garages, machine shops, and recreational buildings that is not integral part of a generating plant substation or control center. As you can see, there are so many similarities in coverage for PEC and NEC, but for offshore by PEC and floating buildings by NEC, I wonder if those two are similar also. Let us tackle the things that PEC doesn't cover. Here are the things not covered by PEC. Installation in railway rolling or stock, aircraft or automotive vehicles. For your information, rolling stock in the rail transport industry refers to railway vehicles including both powered and, and unpowered. For example, locomotives. For aircraft, PEC doesn't cover it. Same with NEC. Similar to automotive vehicles, PEC and NEC don't cover it. PEC Section 1.01.2 Paragraph B Number 2 doesn't cover the installation of railways for generation, transformation, transmission, or distribution of power used exclusively for operations of rolling stock. Let us tackle the thing that NEC Section 90.2b doesn't cover. The code doesn't cover installation in ship or watercraft other than floating buildings, railway, rolling stock. As you can see, PEC Chapter 9 covers watercraft. NEC doesn't cover it, okay? NEC does not cover aircraft or automotive vehicles too other than mobile homes and recreational vehicles. NEC Section 90.2 B Number 2 doesn't cover the installation in the underground mines and self-propelled mobile surface mining machinery and its attendant electrical trailing cable. NEC Section 90.B Number 3 does not cover the installation of railways for generation, transformation, transmission, 
energy storage, or distribution of power used exclusively for operation of a rolling stock or the installation used exclusively for signaling communication purposes. And number four, not covered by NEC is the installation of communication equipment under the exclusive control of communication utilities located outdoor or in building spaces used exclusive for such installation. However, this was covered by PEC under Chapter 8, Communication System. In summary, the major system PEC cover is Communication System and Watercraft, which is not covered by NEC, and I hope I made it clear to you. To continue, NEC Section 90.2 Paragraph B Number 5 does not cover the installation under the exclusive control of an electric utility where such installation consists of service drop or service laterals and associated metering, photo shows those under the DU responsibilities. And on property owned or leased by the electric utility for the purpose of communication, metering, generation, control, transformation, energy storage, or distribution of electric energy, or area located in legally established easement or right of ways or located by other written agreements either designated by or recognized by public service commission utility commissions or other regulatory agencies having jurisdiction for such installation this written agreement shall be limited to installation for the purpose of communication metering generation control transformation transmission energy storage or distribution of electric energy where legally established easement or right of ways cannot be obtained this installation shall be limited to federal lands native american reservation through the u.s department of interior bureau of indian affairs so it includes military bases land controlled by port authorities and state agencies and department and land owned by railroads Philippine Electrical Code doesn't have a special permission, but NEC has. No need for us to read it. It is just all about that AHJ can grant a special permission for the installation of conductors not covered by what I mentioned above. We completed one section, section 1.0.1.2, paragraph ABC, the scope covered and not covered by the code, and NEC special permission which we don't have in PEC. I hope you add up another learning today about understanding the Philippine Electrical Code. You can watch it again for clarity. Please type your positive comment and positive criticism or suggestion if you have one for me, okay? Congratulations! You are moving step by step in understanding the Philippine Electrical Code, but it doesn't end here. We have lots of things to do and we have lots of things to watch. We need to move on to Series 2 Part 3 for Section 1.0.1.3 Authority and Code Arrangement, Section 1.01.4 Enforcement of the Code, Section 1.01.5 Rules on Mandatory Permissive and Explanatory Materials, Section 1.01.6 Interpretation of the Code, it is better that we know it firsthand. See you in part 3 of series 2. I'm Bir Salazar. You can subscribe to this channel to show your support to the electrical profession and don't hesitate to share it with others. Thank you for watching.